All right, sorry guys. Um, I had to leave town uh, to go see my my grandpa. He's um, yeah, he's uh, he's sick and in the hospital, so uh, making an emergency trip emergency trip down to see him. So I'm not here, obviously. Um, so I figured I'd do this recording of you, for you of the PowerPoint, um, and then you can do the framing one assignment. So uh, let's go ahead and start the slideshow here. So again, we're talking about framing today. Uh, it's kind of the first element we're focusing on in photography here is how to frame things properly. And we've already talked about some of these different framing ideas. Um, so we'll go through them here again. Uh, so first off, graphic design. Uh, one of the key elements to any sort of graphic design or photography is just keep it simple. Like the old saying, KISS, K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid, but we don't like saying stupid, so just keep it simple. All right, um, and then we talked about uh, this real basic framing rule, real simple framing rule that we call rule of thirds. So the rule of thirds, again, uh, involves taking your image and dividing it into three sections by drawing two vertical lines like this, and then dividing it into three sections the other way by drawing two horizontal lines. And you end up with these rule of thirds, right? And putting things on the third lines where they intersect uh, makes for a much more interesting photo, right? Because it creates asymmetrical symmetry. All right. Um, two great videos on framing and rule of thirds. So the, the one video is not there. Let's see if we can pull up the other video real quick, though. So this is a good video on rule of thirds. So we're going to watch it real quick here just because I do think it is good. The rule of thirds is probably the fundamental building block of all of the rules of composition. What you do is you draw two imaginary vertical lines on your image equally spaced apart, thus dividing it into one, two, three sections. Two more horizontal lines equally spaced apart and you have one, two, three sections. By placing points of interest or your subject along or near those lines, particularly where they cross, where they meet, you will get a much more pleasing composition. So how do we use this in reality? I've got a windmill over here which I prepared earlier. Now, if we put this windmill smack in the middle of the frame, yeah, it's a kind of interesting shot because it's a windmill on a nice day. But let me just step out of the picture. Just contemplate that for a moment. It's okay, but is it a pleasing composition? Would you think, that's great, I want that on my wall? Possibly not. So what do we do? We need to move the windmill to a different place in the picture. Now obviously I can't pick up the windmill and move it, so all you've got to do is change the direction your camera's pointing. I've got an imaginary rope attached to the front of the video camera, and I'm going to pull the camera over this way to place the windmill on the vertical third on the left-hand side. So let's come over this way a bit. There we go. As we ease it over, it's looking better already. Right, now we've got the windmill sat on the vertical third on the left-hand side of the picture. The gap on the left-hand side of the picture is a third of the way in. But it's probably sitting a little bit high in the frame. So what we now need to do is to make the windmill go a bit lower. And we do that by tilting the front of the camera up a bit. That's also going to place that bank along the bottom third. So your windmill is sitting nicely in the crook of a vertical third and a horizontal third. Let me get out the picture again so you can have a look. That is considerably better than putting it in the middle. Let's just pop it back in the middle again. So we're going to go down and we're going to go left with the camera, that is, which has the opposite effect on the subject. It's not that interesting. Let's go back to something a bit nicer. Back onto that rule of thirds. And we're doing this with the video camera so that you can see it's just moving the camera. That's all you have to do. Now you can apply this to anything. It doesn't just have to be in landscape or a windmill. You could use it on a portrait, on a building. You can use it on flowers. 
And I suggest what you do is when you're looking at a magazine or watching a TV program, just imagine these imaginary third lines and see if it applies to the image. It won't apply to all of them, but it will apply to many more than you might imagine. All right, so again, just moving uh, your camera a little bit and recomposing things can really make a big difference. And the rule of thirds, that's what it's all about, is where you place things within your composition to get a nice looking image. Um, so yeah, let's pull back up our PowerPoint here. All right. Oh, this is out of order again. All right, sorry. I downloaded this at home. I fixed it at school. But anyway, um, so we have some different shots, and we're going to come back and talk about those in a minute. But um, so, um, as we've talked about before, just a little review, right? We have object framing objects. Um, so we looked at that with the mirror and the car, um, and some other examples on our other slideshow. But again, the idea of having your your image and having something frame out your image is what we call object framing an object. So again, here's a nice image of a beach being framed by a piece of driftwood. Um, so if we look at this image here, this, this image is pretty good. Um, if I was in person, I'd be asking you, right, what's the subject? Well, the subject's the couple down here, right? And then what's the frame? The frame is the bridge here around the couple, right? Uh, this image also got some nice things going on um, that we talked a little bit about when we talked about when we were looking at the decisive moment, right? We have these things called leading lines, right? So all the lines here are leading us, pointing us to our subject. So that's really cool too. Um, so you can even do object framing an object with a landscape. So here we have a landscape with object framing an object and we're using a cave here to frame in the landscape. Um, so you can even do this with something like maybe a window. So here's another example, right? Of an object framing an object with a landscape through a window. Um, so this is interesting. So a uh, point of view is this idea of having kind of a unique point of view. Um, a lot of times that means like from the point of view of the person of the, like a subject. So like uh, we looked at this a little bit last class um, when we talked about the uh, Photoshop practice two assignment, right? So uh, a point of view shot can be something like the guy riding the bicycle and you're looking like through his eyes, right? So it's kind of usually the idea and the term that we use it is like through that person's eyes. Uh, but it can also mean a unique point of view, like through like the grasshopper's eyes or through like a uh, eagle's eyes or something like that. So really low view or really high view, very unique out of the ordinary uh, positioning of the camera. We call that like a point of view shot. So in this, this shot here, we're like, we got the point of view of like one of these balls, one of these croquet balls looking through this, I keep calling it a wicket. I don't know what it's actually called, whatever this, this thing here, but it's still also object, uh, frame an object, right? Cause we got this wicket here framing our subjects back there in the background. All right. Um, so again, object framing an object. Um, this is not maybe not the most exciting photo. It is an interesting, whatever this is monument. Um, again, it's framing the clouds here in the background, but it doesn't necessarily make for the most exciting photo ever. So just because you follow some of these rules doesn't mean you're going to get the best photo ever. Right. But, um, knowing those rules sometimes can help you make better photos. Um, so for example, this photo here, right. If we just had a photo of a cow, it probably wouldn't be as, as great to look at as this one here with all this texture and everything from the, uh, from the fence. Right. So we got an object framing an object and a really cool photo. Um, so yeah, so sometimes it, it can really help. So it's good to know these rules. Um, so we look at this one, right? What's the subject, right? It's the guy on the bike, right? And what's framing him, right? We got the bridge in the background. What else is this a good example of? Uh, the decisive moment, right? Because he's riding along and the photographer waited till just the right moment where he's centered between these two beams and got that photo. Um, it's also interesting to point out, right, as we looked at all these other photos, where's our frame? Our frame's in the foreground here, right? Where's the frame? The frame's in the foreground. Where's the frame? In the foreground, right? In the foreground, in the foreground, in the foreground. And our subject's always in the background. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way for it to be an object framing an object. So here, 
we look at this bridge photo, right? The bridge is in the background and our subjects in the foreground, right? We could do the same thing. Somebody walking down the street and uh, we snap the picture just as they walk in front of a window and the window frames them out, right? So it doesn't necessarily to be object framing the object. The frame doesn't always have to be in the foreground, um, but most of the time it probably is. Um, so yeah, so the other thing we wanted to talk about is shot types. So let me go again, this is a little bit out of order, um, but this is kind of common language that uh, photographers use. Um, also super common um, if you're gonna be a, if you're doing anything with video or with like filmmaking, uh, we talk about different kinds of shots. Um, so we have an establishing wide shot that's like a super wide shot of like an entire building or an entire campus. So like if you're watching a movie, right, the first scene you're probably gonna see is like a, a wide shot of the location where this movie is taking place, right? That's kind of establishing where you're at. So we call that establishing wide shot, also called an extreme wide shot. So really wide, um, lots of detail. The people are just little dots on the screen or, you know, real small on the screen, right? And then as we get closer, we have a wide shot. So this is all about framing people. So if I ask you to go out and take a photo and I want a wide shot, right? A wide shot's gonna be uh, an entire body of a person. So you're gonna see their head, you're gonna see their feet from head to toe, right? You're gonna see their whole body. Um, and then you have a, uh, this, that's a wide shot. Um, sometimes you could have a medium wide shot. We don't really cover that here, but that'd be kind of around the knees. But again, you don't, um, you don't ever really cut at the knees. And we'll talk about that. Cutting at the joints is not good. It looks bad. So you don't ever cut people at their knees. You don't cut them at their ankles. You don't even cut them at their waist, right? So you, uh, when you do these shots, and when you say medium wide shot, that's like a little bit above their knees or a little bit below their knees. Cause you don't really want to cap them at the knees. Right. Um, so, and then um, a medium shot is from the waist up, but again, you always go a little bit above the waist or a little bit below the waist. Never right at the waist, right? Because we want to avoid cutting at the joints. It just looks weird. It makes it kind of, our brains don't like it, right? So uh, that's a medium shot. And then we have a medium uh, close up. So a medium close up is from the, uh, from your chest up roughly. So from your chest up um, and then uh, a regular close up is just like your shoulders and your neck and your head. And the extreme close up is anything closer than that. So just your face or just your eyes, right, is an extreme close up. So again, that seems to be the two that people really get confused on is close up and extreme close up. If you look up close up, right, on Google, you're going to get a lot of images that are actually extreme close ups. So a regular close up still has, you know, the top of people's heads and it has, you know, a little bit of their shoulder or, all of their neck, right? And I'll show you some examples here as we go through this. So, so here's kind of just to show you how it works, right? So a uh, wide shot, right, is head to toe. Medium shot, again, here's from the waist up. But again, we try not to cut at the at the wrists. We try not to cut at the, at the waist. It's, it can be hard to do sometimes. Do you try not to cut at the elbows too, uh, if you can avoid it? So we try to avoid cutting anywhere where there's a joint. So ankles, knees, waist, um, elbow and the neck, right? You don't want to cut somebody's neck off and just have a floating head there. It looks weird, right? So medium shot is either a little bit above the waist or a little bit below the waist. Uh, medium close up again, it's from the chest up. Close up is from the shoulders up and extreme close up is like just the face or just the eyes or just one body part, right? So here's a nice example of a wide shot, right? We got them from the head to the toe. What else is this a good example of? That's right. Rule of thirds, right? He's on the, on the right hand third. Also again, leading lines, right? So we got the lines are all leading to him. Um, so it also, that's a, another good trait. Um, so again, that's a wide shot, medium shot. So again, medium shot is from about the waist up as we can see here, right? The person, it's not exactly at the waist. We went a little bit below her waist and from below her waist up, right? Um, because again, cutting at the joints just doesn't look right. So we always go a little bit below the waist or a little bit above the waist to get a nice photo. All right. And then medium close up again is from about the chest up. All right. So you got quite a bit of the chest and then up and the whole face, the whole head, right? Is a medium close up. And then when we get into close up, close up again, we just have a little bit of the shoulder maybe, or, um, but all of the neck and all of the head. I mean, sometimes you can have a little bit of haircut, but again, for the most part, a close up is just somebody's head. But again, you don't cut the neck off. You leave the neck there. If you cut the neck off, then it looks a little strange, unless you're going for an extreme close up. 
So extreme close-ups, right, are things like just the eyes or just somebody's mouth or like just somebody's hand sticking a $100 bill in their pocket right in a movie maybe for a cutaway. But we're in photography, so for the most part we're talking about things like just extreme close-up on somebody's face or somebody's eyes. All right, but as you can see, extreme close-up. I got no neck, but we're also cutting off a little bit of its chin. So we're going above the neck in that sense. All right, and also typically he's getting a haircut too, right? Most of his top of his head's also missing. So again, that's an extreme close-up. So uh, the most common confusion I see is like the the scene from The Shining where, you know, he's sticking his head through the door and people put that out as a close-up. That's really more of an extreme close-up because all you can see is his face, right? You lose the rest of his body. It's It's too close. All right. Um, so things to avoid again, really important. Don't cut somebody at their joints. So avoid waist, knees and ankles, etc. It just looks weird, right? If you got, don't do a wide shot where you see their entire body, but then you don't see their feet. Like you just cut off their feet. That's just, it's just weird. Just don't do it. All right. Um, it just looks a lot better if you avoid that. All right. So for your assignment today, you guys are going to go ahead and complete the framing assignment in Schoology. Uh, create a Photoshop document and give examples of all the shots we've covered. Um, you can use images from the internet um, and you're going to turn it as a JPEG. This will help develop your eye for framing. So again, you guys should already know how to create a document in school in, uh, not in school, uh, in Photoshop, right? We went over that last couple of assignments. If you need help with that, you can go back and look there. You can just use a regular sheet of paper, eight and a half by 11 for the size, 300 pixels per inch. Um, and you're just going to go ahead and um, create a nice little layout um, that shows that you kind of understand what all these different shots are and how to use them. So, or what they look like. Um, so again, here's an example from uh, Mrs. Toff. So we got an extreme wide shot, a wide shot, a medium shot, medium close up, close up, extreme close up, object framing an object, point of view, and rule third. So when you're done, you should have nine photos. Those should be the nine photos. Um, again, remember it's just create the document eight and a half by 11, 300 pixels per inch would be a regular sheet of paper it is a good size to use for this. You can do landscape or portrait, um, file place embedded to put your photos in there and then just add text to make sure each one's labeled again, try to make it look nice. Try to get all your photos kind of the same size and laid out nicely. And you can even put in a background, you know, you got, you got 90 minutes, uh, minus whatever time you spent watching this video. So, um, so again, try to make it look good. So you got like about an hour, probably, if you watch this video right at the start of class. Um, again, I also threw on here for a reference. Again, here's just your full shot, medium shot, medium close up, close up, extreme close up. All right, and they're all listed here: extreme wide shot, wide shot, medium shot, medium close up, close up, extreme close up, object frame and object point of view rule third. So that's what I'm looking for. All right, remember, it needs to be submitted as a JPEG, all right? So submit it as a .jpeg. Um, that's it. You guys should do great. Um, I'll see you hopefully on Friday or, uh, or next week uh, whenever I get back. All right, so peace out, Lincoln.